You must be kicking yourself for not walking out when you could. Be a judgment. But don't you worry, son. It will all be over soon. You got to know when to hold up. Know when to fold up. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. Well, the Bad Beat on Cancer Poker Tournament is a tournament that was set up by Phil Gordon and Ray First, who are two professional poker players. And they started it here in Washington five years ago. We actually did one six years ago in Houston, and that was the first one that we did. And the tournament spurs off of their Bad Beat on Cancer initiative that they started at the World Series of Poker in 2003. And bad beat is, if you're a poker player, you know that you took a bad beat, meaning somebody won and they shouldn't have won. And so bad beat is their initiative to raise money for cancer research. Since bad beat on cancer initiative started, it has raised over $2 million. Uh, Rafe and I started this uh, bad beat on cancer in the first year. We got oh, about 60 players at the World Series of Poker, about 10% of the field to donate 1% of whatever they want in that championship event, including Chris Moneymaker, who ended up winning that event. So uh, that really got us, got us off to a good start. And it's a great way to get people to come out and support a great cause like Prevent Cancer uh, and at the same time have a good time playing a game they all love. You know, I have to say, when we first had um, Phil and Rafe approach us, we were like, I don't know, professional gamblers. They approached the American Cancer Society, who rightly so, I think, thought they were kooks and didn't really talk to them. We talked to them, and so we set it up, and sure enough, they raised $100,000. And we said, well, let's just continue here and see what we can do. You know, it is not hard to get members of Congress involved. We even get members of Congress who have absolutely no idea how to play poker. Um, it's really hard not to find somebody who's been touched by cancer. And so they really come out because, one, some of them come out because they like to play poker. Some come out because they've been touched by cancer or they really like the foundation and the work that we're doing. And we call and so if they can do it, they come. If they can't do it, they don't come. We've had some members who've come, they've had to go back and vote and they come back for us. Some go and vote and they don't come back. You know, it's a luck of the draw, but we usually manage to get a member for every table. This is a fun thing to do uh, for a very good cause. I'm happy to be here. This is a great organization and uh, it helps a lot of people and I've seen it firsthand. I did when I was in college and I just stopped. Um, and I, didn't play, I never played Texas, Texas Hold'em. This is a whole new, new experience for me. Several of the members are involved in it and um, uh, we were invited to I play a little poker when I was in college. And I thought it'd be great fun to come out and for a good cause. Uh, preventing cancer, we need the research and uh, the organization here is doing an excellent job. You don't want to play? No, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> Not a poker player at all? No. It's a very important cause, and also, I am the main sponsor of the bill to repeal the foolish law that makes it illegal for people who want to gamble to gamble over the internet. I think that's an incredible intrusion on individual liberty, and uh, so I've been working with the poker players, among others, to get that repealed. They're playing poker for a very good cause, which I obviously support. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm in pink now for, uh, for breast cancer. Obviously, I am in favor of gaming, being the representative from Las Vegas. So I think all forms of gaming are fine, and I don't think the federal government has got any business interfering with people's pleasure and enjoyment. Who do you think has the best poker face and of the members of Congress? Well, it's certainly not Jim McGovern. Um. <laughs> if I'm not going to be afraid of Phil Ivey at the poker table, um, you know, I think I might better handle Barney Frank. I'm, I'm going to say, you know, uh, Barney Frank has a pretty good poker face. Um, you know, I haven't sat down yet uh, across from him at the poker table. I think I, you know, I'd welcome the opportunity uh, as a challenge. Who has the best poker face on the hill? I haven't thought about it. Uh, today, Howard Lederer has the best poker face. You know, has a good face is uh, Joe Barton. You can't quite tell what he's thinking sometimes, but the people at his table love it. I would say John Dingle. Up until this year, I think the best poker player that we had at this event was uh, John Sununu. Uh, unfortunately, he will not be joining us uh, this year, uh, but uh, I know that there's gonna be quite a few members of both the House and the Senate here, and someone will emerge as a great poker player for sure. Uh, of course, the lobbyists sometimes take it a little easy on them, so. 
Uh, but we don't encourage that behavior. We want the lobbyists to, and the senators and the members of the House to play as hard as they can against each other, uh, and I think that's the way it should be. Of all the representatives tonight, you actually did pretty well. Is that an unusual well, occurrence? Or, uh... It doesn't help to do pretty well. You want to win this thing. and. Uh, I had a chance tonight. I was way, I was ahead at one time, and uh, as the normal poker lament is, some bad beats. I just got, I busted out on three of a kind, which is a pretty good hand. If you had actually won the seat, the grand prize, would you go with it? I would have checked with the ethics committee, uh, and if they would have allowed it, I would have gone to Las Vegas and played in the main event. There is some. Um, you know, correlation between poker and politics. It's not 100 percent, but uh, yeah, the skills transfer over a little bit. There are a lot of tough decisions to be made, and there are a lot of, uh, you know, different competing interests, uh, competing emotions probably for the members themselves. And uh, if you're displaying all those emotions and all those torn feelings, you know, right there on your face all the time, you know, you, you're just giving up too much, right? I mean, a lot of being a politician is bargaining, is being at the table. Maybe you aren't at such a strong position, but you need to at least project a position of strength while you're negotiating a certain policy. I think uh, all politics, uh, all politicians really need to have a good poker face. Uh, you know, you're always reading your opponents and finding out how strong and how weak they are. That's a kind of a quintessential skill in almost every profession, but uh, it's certainly true of all politicians. You know, President Obama is very expressive, and he's certainly gone very far uh, with a non-poker face. So I don't know that a poker face is that helpful in public service. No, oh no, no. I think uh, people who are very expressive sometimes do very well. Politics is uh, its just a different form of poker, I guess.